Alright y'all, we're gonna we gonna get Pastor started. Pastor Jordan with a do-rag. Oh, I do care. Pastor's best friend. Oh my gosh, Armor. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna open up in a word of prayer before we start. So Heavenly Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for all that you did tonight to move, God. And we just praise you and we give you glory and honor, God. And even as we do a quick recap, and God, as we just share the message you gave for us in this season, God, tonight we just declare that your Holy Spirit and ask your Holy Spirit to come and just dwell in our midst and just have your way here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so, la so last year I thought we had a pretty good um, uh, discussion and talk about, you know, something that God had laid on my heart last year about the Joshua generation. And, you know, um, I think this is something we're going to keep doing because God gave me another word this year for us. And, you know, the word this year, um, what's up, guys? The Alex, word this year that Alex. God wants me to share with us and the word for us this year is that God can do it for you too. So that's the title that I, I just want to talk about a little bit because God has really been dealing with me a lot about our position of faith. And especially us being the young adults and us, you know, being the next generation that God is raising up. He does not want us walking around having a false sense of identity. But what he wants us to have is a position of faith. And he wants us to believe in our heart that he can do it for us too. You know, as Christians, we sometimes have a wrong mindset. And one of the greatest things that Satan will bring against the church is jealousy. Not against the world, but against one another. Against our own brothers and sisters. And Satan will try and bring division against us because when we see people blessed with the things we desire... We can be happy for them for to an extent, but not all the way because we start to question in ourselves, why not be God? Why are they worthy of this blessing, but why am I not able to get this very thing that I've been desiring? So what we do is we end up internally being mad at the person because they got a blessing. And how backwards does that sound as us being the children of God saying, do not forsake the, the, the assembling together of yourselves. You know, as a man or as some do, even as much more as we see that, that day approaching. And then he says things, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together. Iron sharpens iron. All, pray for one another. Confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. You know, and all these different scriptures, but we end up still being upset at someone because God ended up blessing them. And the thing is, is that we, we, we have this mindset that we deserve what they have. But we haven't really known what they have labored through mm -hmm. and what they've struggled in and their fasting and their prayer behind the scenes that God had opened, that God had blessed them openly. Mm -hmm. You know, even the Bible says when you fast, you know, do it, don't, don't uh, appear before men, you know, that, that you've been weeping or, you're, or you look weak. But he said, anoint yourself with oil and wash your face and walk in what you do in secret. You know, he will reward you openly for that. And, and a lot of times people are blessed by God because they labor. They have faith. They've stood on the promises of God. And just like we've waited, those people waited as well. And what Satan will do is he will cause division among the brethren. And, the Bible, and, what, and what Satan uses that to do is to tear apart the church. Because the Bible says, that's right, boo. Because <laughs> a house divided among itself, the word says, cannot stand. Right? And there's a spirit that's called Rahab that Pastor Blaine has taught about, Patty has taught about. And what it does is it operates in jealousy. And what it does is it shoots fiery darts at the person that you're jealous of based on the words that you speak out of jealousy. But one thing that God revealed to me this morning about Rahab as I was praying about this is Rahab not only projects fiery darts to someone else but what Rahab also does is he she turns around and she ends up shooting fiery darts in your own heart because you because of the words you start now to speak out of jealousy is I'm not worthy of this blessing God must not love me wow. you know why did I why did they get that and why didn't I so Rahab not only shoots fiery darts at those people you're jealous of but she also turns around and ends up shooting fiery darts back at you because of the words that you end up speaking out of your mouth, out of jealousy. And this spirit is very foul. And it's rooted also in anger. And it makes you hate a person because they were blessed by God. You know, and it makes you even sometimes physically sick at times. Because now you're harboring unforgiveness. 
you're harboring bitterness, you're, you're harboring hatred towards a person because God blessed them, you know? And we don't realize that when we do things like that, we're sacrificing our own blessing. You know, we don't realize that when you're on, when you're, when you're not grateful for your brother, you're withholding your own blessing, you know, because what it, what ends up happening is you allow a spirit to come into your heart that now becomes an iniquity that's deep down and rooted and hidden at times. And, and you're so focused on someone else and how God is blessing them instead of you taking time to see God for yourself. Right. You know, and one thing God has taught me is that when you rejoice for someone else's blessing, the blessing then comes upon you. Mm -hmm. You know, when you rejoice, you know, the, the thing is, is that faith is rejoicing not only 100%, but 110% in someone else's blessing and not looking at yourself, but rather saying, God, if you can do it for my brother or if you can do it for my sister, God, you're no respect to a person, so you can do it for me too. Right. You know, and this is where we have to shift our mindset. You know, God, God was dealing with me today about that word position. You know, the word position of faith. And, and the word position means a place where someone is rooted and a place where somebody is located. So God is saying for us to have a position of faith. He wants us to be not only having faith, but being rooted in our faith. And, and just like a tree, it goes deep down. The roots go deep down that even when the winds come, that, that tree will stay in its place because the roots are deep down and the same thing with us is when we have our faith and we're rooted and positioned in our faith it doesn't matter what trials come our way we will still be planted in our faith that no matter what if God's blessing somebody else if 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 somebody is coming up against me and cursing me I will still have faith because it's not an emotion or it's not a it's not something that I do but it's something that's who I am Faith is a part of your identity. You know, faith isn't something you just have. It's something that's a part of your spiritual DNA. You know, when Satan died, when Jesus died on the cross, he gave you the, the identity of faith. Because when he walked this earth, he was walking faith. You know, he, he had no doubt in the world, but he had complete faith and he had a position of faith in his father that whatever he prayed, he knew it was already going to be done mm. because he was rooted in his, in his position of faith. You know, and God gives us all a measure of faith, the Bible says, but I believe we all have a responsibility to be rooted and have a position of faith. You know, the, that position, the thing is, is that it's a position of being unmovable while believing that God is already moving. That's what a position of faith is. It's being unmovable. Come out in the name of Jesus. It's, 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 you all right? You need some water? I have, a, I have a bottle of water over there. Yeah, so again, a position of faith is being unmovable while believing that God is already moving. You know, even the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. In the Lord. You know, even here, even though right now you may be seeing the unseen, right? You may, you, you may be having evidence of things not seen. Right now you're believing for something, but you're not seeing the evidence of it, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to still stand for the things that I'm hoping for according to his will, you know, because what is faith? It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. We may not be seeing the things we're hoping for, mm -hmm. but a position of faith is still standing, believing that those things are going to come, mm -hmm. you know? And, and well, I'm gonna stand in my position of faith, mm -hmm. believing that even though I may not see it, it's already done. Mm -hmm. Because at, us, as, us as the children of God, <laughs> we have been given a weapon in our mouth to declare and decree the things of God over our lives. You know, the Bible says in, in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we don't realize that we have a weapon that we can create contracts in the spirit realm by decreeing and declaring the word of the Lord and the will of God over our lives, you know? Um, the thing is, is that the weapon is in your mouth to bring forth God's will in your life. You know, you can expedite the will of God for your life by using your weapon and your words to declare the word of God over your life. I truly believe that. You know, I truly believe that you, you may have a sickness in your body, but you can usher in 
you know, your healing and expedite your healing even at times by being <coughs> positioned in your faith and declaring and decreeing your healing and making that, de that declaration and that spiritual contract in heaven that can't be broken. And by serving God and by thanking him for what already has been declared and what has already been done in the spirit, that thing now is ushered into the earthly realm, you know? We are called to declare and decree according to God's word. Because even Job 22, 28 says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Okay? So God is saying, you decree. You use the word, and you decree the very things that you have been desiring. The things that you know that God has has called for you. You know, if it's a healing in your body, if, if you want your family to be healed and saved, you use the weapon in your word to decree the very word of God and then it it, it, it it literally is spoken out of your mouth and it's established. It's a contract that's in heaven that just needs to come forth. You know, because just like any legal contract, it cannot be broken. And that's the same thing with your words. You know, the thing is, is that when you know that you're in God's will and you decree something, it becomes an official contract in the spirit and that means it's already done. Amen. And because God is spirit and he's not bound to our time, it means that the moment you speak it, it's already done. Mm -hmm. You know, because the spirit realm has no time limit. It has no geographical location. So when you speak out of your mouth that you're healed, guess what, it's already done. Oh. But now what it has to do, it has to manifest from that realm now into heaven. God, I pray over Ellie right now. What's going on with you? God, I pray over our bonded spirit that's trying to tickle her right now. Not tickle. Tickle, tickle. tickle her throat in Jesus' name. You need me to love, sorry. Fire. It just went down the wrong pipe. I'm good. Okay, I'm Way good. going up, no bear his All right. So, the thing is, is that it just takes time to manifest in this realm, amen? And it's your position of faith. That is what ushers it in to this dimension. And you want to know how, you want to know a scripture that aligns with this is 2 Peter 3, 8 that says, The Lord is not slack not concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That word slack, you know, when, when God had me study the scripture, he had me study the word slack. Because we always quote that scripture, God's not slack concerning his promise. But what does that really mean? The word slack in this instant in the Greek means delayed. So that means the Lord is not delayed concerning his promise, right? God is not, de God is not delayed. So when he speaks it, it's already done, right? That means he's not, his, his promise is not delayed. So just the thought, I want you guys to think about this. If Jesus lives within you, and has desires for you, is it really you speaking it out of your mouth, the desires that he has for you and declaring those things? Or is it God himself speaking it through you? Because the Bible says he's not slack concerning his promise. So if the spirit of the living God is living in you, maybe it's him and his spirit that's actually speaking the promise out of you. And because it's him literally speaking through you, that means that it's already done because he's not slack. He's not delayed. And that's just a thought. I'm not saying that that's biblical, but I'm just thinking that's a thought. You know, it's just a passive blank. There's some things that may not be biblical, but it's something just to ponder on. You know, and I was thinking yeah. about this this morning. God, I believe God was giving me revelation in this. But, you know, if he's the one speaking, that means that it's already done because it's already come out of your mouth. You know, so that's why I'm saying the weapon is in your mouth. Because, and you don't even know if it's you speaking it or God is declaring and decreeing the blessings out of your out of your own mouth, you know? So here the revelation is God is not delayed concerning his promise. So that that's because his identity is not slack. But the thing is, is that we can hinder the blessing that it ends up being delayed. Because the Bible says that God is not slack. It doesn't say that the promise is not slack, but it says that God is not slack. So when God speaks it, it's already done. Right? And when it's spoken, boom, it's done. He spoke creations into existence, and guess what? It was done. When God said, light be, when he spoke it, he declared it, and it was not slack. It came right into fruition. Because God is a creator, and he uses your mouth to create miracles. Amen? Your mouth is the instrument that God uses to bring heaven down to earth. 
And but do you believe that it's in your words that God can bring that dimension of heaven down to earth? And the thing is, is that the promise is slack through your doubt and your unbelief. You know, this promise is slack, is is delayed through your murmuring and your complaining. You know, God had promised the Israelites the promised land. He was not slack concerning that promise. That promised land was there for them. But because of their doubt, their unbelief, and their murmuring and their complaining, that the promise itself ended up becoming slack. So what we have to do is we got to shift our mindset. Amen? <coughs> the thing is, is that if God, God is no respecter of person. And if he did it for someone else, guess what? He's capable of doing it for you too because he's not slack. He's not delayed. And a lot of times we look at other people and we lust after the calling of their lives. We lust after the blessing. We say, we want to be just like them. I want what they have. But God has something in store just for you. Yeah. God has something that's special that only your DNA can fulfill on this earth. And if you don't fulfill it, there's no one else that can walk in the very thing that God has designed for you. You know, the thing is, is that we are made in his likeness and in his image. And the reality is that God does have favor on those who trust him. You know, those that love him, those that are called according to his purpose, he does have favor. So the thing is, is that each and every one of you love him, right? Each and every one of you believe that God has a promise for you. So my question is, why are you laying down and dying and believing that God can't do it for you? Why is the doubt of your mind making the decision for you? You know, why are you not allowing your, your weapon in your word to pray against what the enemy is trying to lie to you in your mind? You know, all of us, a lot of us are looking for a spouse and, and, and waiting on God's spouse, waiting on the spouse. When Satan comes up against you with loneliness, why are we laying down and allowing that to grip us, knowing that we're not alone? Why are we allowing the, the whispers of the enemy to determine the promise that God has for us? Why are, we, why are we allowing the whispers of the enemy to block us from actually praying and, usher in, and ushering in the very thing that God has for us? You know, when you, the thing is, is that if God did it again for those in the word, if God did it for those that you've seen, if God can heal Pastor Blaine of cancer, he can heal any of us from any sickness that we go through. Yep. Amen. He's, he's not a respecter of person. The thing is, is that we got to be rooted in the identity of who he is. Amen. Because we, uh, we don't know our identity. A lot of us, uh, most of us in here don't know who we really are mm -hmm. because we haven't really got to know who he really is. Because to know who you really are, you have to know who he really is. Because you're made in his likeness. You're made in his image. The generational curses that may have come from the seed of sin of your forefathers now becomes broken and the blessing comes from the seed of your heavenly father. But do you believe that? Do you believe by faith that the seed of God is living in you? Do you believe by faith that God's word is, is really quick and powerful? And sharper than any two-edged sword that can literally cut asunder the curses and, and have them be cast to the pit of hell and now released with the blessings of the word. You know? When you recognize him as a healer, you now recognize that your identity is healed. You know? When you recognize him to be a savior, you now realize that you cannot drown anymore because he saves you. You know, your identity is your stability. Your identity mm -hmm. in him is your stability. Because a lot of times what happens is us as Christians, we are mentally unstable. Mm -hmm. and, and churches don't talk about this, but it's the truth. Mental illness runs in a lot of Christians more than we realize. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And mental illness is not just schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. It's not just bipolar. Mental illness, what God revealed to me, is anything that comes against your sound. That's right. Mm -hmm. and doubt, unbelief. Fear, anxiety, worry, all those things are rooted in mental illness. Mm -hmm. But I believe God is calling us to take back our mind because our mind is where the battlefield is and that's where the battle starts. You know, if you're suffering with something in your body and your mind tells you that you're not healed, if you don't cast that thing down, you're going to come under the covering of that pain mm -hmm. and you're going to come under the covering of that sickness without realizing that your identity is already healed. Because you know and have the identity of him being the healer. So that means I'm already healed. Mm -hmm. So what we've got to do is take back our mind. Amen. And we got to learn his character to know who we are. And you know, 
the thing is, is that he will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. And one thing that I just want to share is that we are in a transitioning period. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody is feeling the effect of transitioning. You know, when you move from one house to the other, in the natural, you deal with the heartache of moving and packing up and, and worrying about how am I going to get all this thing, all these things from one place to the other. And then when you get there, you worry about unpacking. And the transitioning period is difficult and it's hard. You know, and there's trials that come with it. There's some confusion that comes with it. There's, there's uncertainty that comes with it. And, and a lot of times, um, what, with, with a transition, there comes a lot of trials and backlash. And I don't know about you, but I really believe in my heart that in my own personal life, I'm in a transition period to another level. But I think the church <laughs> as a whole, we're in a transition period. And because we're under the covering of the church, we're all feeling the effect of that transitioning period and you know God had revealed to me I was I was walking into work one day and he said I'm delivering you from that roller coaster spirit Amen. and I said what I said I've never heard that in my life and he said Jordan your your mind has been nothing but a roller coaster mm. and and it goes up and you have highs and then you go down low and then you go back up and then you and you go down low and it's like there's no stability in your mind and I believe that God is calling us to deliver us from that roller coaster spirit. Amen. Because a, a double minded man, the Bible says, is unstable in all of his ways. And that's a man that can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and an improper <laughs> balance, the Bible says, is, is an abomination to the Lord. Abomination to the Lord. I, I say it like my pastor an abomination. Abomination. Abominable. And, 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 and I believe. <laughs> 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 and I believe that I believe that God is taking us out of this place, you know, of being unstable. And, and and God is wanting us to believe that He wants to bless you, you know, personally. He wants you to know that you care. He cares so much about you, and you mean so much to Him that He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you with the desires of your heart. You know, the Bible says that those that delight themselves in Him, He will give the desires of your heart. Kelly, I believe God is going to give you that house. Yeah. I believe God is going to bring you that spouse. You know, but do you believe that? Are you? Are you? Yeah. I mean, that okay, so What I said, you said spouse. You said spouse. spouse so that's oh, I think, well, you, you said, said Kelly. I thought I said, I, I thought I said you what? Said you said God's going to give you that spouse. You said God's going to give you that house. Bars. 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 No, but going back to what we were talking about, Kelly, I do believe that. You know, no. but the question is, are you are you positioned in your faith to receive that? You know? Because a lot of times, and that's a question for each and every one of you. What are you? What have you been believing God for? Like, like Pastor Armour was talking about today. You know, what have you been been believing for God to do? I don't believe there's any desire that's too far off that God can't do. You know, I believe that, and, and obviously it has to align with his will, you know, but if it does align with his will, like, do you desire to really go into the streets and lay hands on the sick and they recover? I believe God will do that for you. You know, I believe that if you want to raise the dead, I believe that God will do that for you, you know? And it's like God is calling us to really take our stand in our position. You know, and when you realize he's not delayed concerning his promise, he's not slack. When you, when God says it's done, you believe it's done. Oh, so yeah. it's not about how God is going to do it. It's just the recognition that God is going to do it. Wow. Wait one second, I got you. Right. And, and so the one thing that God wants me to tell you guys today, and this is what God told me to write down, and I'm going to write this, I'm going to say this word for word. He says, we need to love ourselves more so that we do not put ourselves in a position of self-harmony. And when we have doubt and we have unbelief and when we have fear, you're putting yourself in a position of self-harm. Because you're literally saying, I'm not good enough for God. God bless you. I bless you. And the Lord, and the Lord keep, keep you. May His face shine upon you. 
and be gracious and be gracious and be gracious and make his countenance shine and um numbers 23 number 6 so, um, going back to the place, uh, going back to the place, um, you know, we, we got to love ourselves more that we don't put ourselves in a place of self on. Because when you put yourself in a position of doubt and unbelief and fear, and you know, worry and all those things, you're literally harming yourself. Because you're not positioned in the place where you're open for God to bless you. But literally, you're in a place where God literally hides his face from you, the Bible says. You know, because it's the iniquities that's in your heart that the Bible says that he hides his face from you. So his glory can't shine on you when there's iniquity, you know, when there's deep hidden sin. So, you know, tonight, I, I, I just want to pray. And I want to lay hands on everybody because God told me to do this. But he wants me to pray for the anointing to come forth that every man and woman of strength would come forth. Amen. To endure through the upcoming um, trials and things like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, but you know, just to endure. Well, life in itself is a trial. Right? And it's like, oh, it's like oh, it's a ghetto. I didn't actually get it. I got it in my room. Just spit and pray. Wait, wait, apple bottom G jeans, boots with the fur. I know. I know. All right, Alex, go get the oil. You guys didn't hear Nicole's question. What was your so question? Nicole, go ahead, say it again. You can say it. Cool. So Nicole's question was, how do you know if your will aligns with God's your desire? Your desires align with God's desire. Go ahead and answer. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You're on that, camera. That, You're on camera. That is true. Very well true. But there's also... But also another thing that what I do is I present that desire to God. And I say, God, if this is your will for my life, keep this desire in my heart. But God, if it's not yours, I surrender it to you. And I don't want it if it's not your desire. So I believe, because the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And then he will direct your path. So I believe if it's a desire that, that you have, that you're unsure of, you can acknowledge him in that. Acknowledging God that this is a desire I have, but I'm unsure if it's of your will. And if it's not your will, God, take it away from me. But if it is your will, God, I declare that it comes to pass in Jesus' name. Yeah, question. Yes. So, okay, back to like what you were talking about, how like about the bells.